equal temperament isn't that bad. I know, there's a whole book written about how equal temperament ruined harmony, but hear me out. First, we need a little bit of background. When we play a note, we hear not only the fundamental note which we are playing, but also many quieter overtones above it. You almost never notice it, but when we use a filter to find these overtones, also known as harmonics, it's clear that they're there. It's the magnitudes of each of these overtones which differentiates, say, a violin from a trombone. A common pattern that these overtones follow is known as the harmonic series, which is formed by the integer multiples of the lowest frequency. For example, the series built on a frequency of 100 cycles per second, otherwise known as hertz, would look like this. Let's tune our piano in C major, based on the harmonic series. This is known as just intonation. Okay, sounds great. It might sound a little unusual because our ears are used to 12-tone equal temperament, but this scale is what C major should sound like according to the harmonic series. Now our piano is tuned in C major, let's play a quick piece. Did you notice it sounded a little unusual? That's because whenever we played a chord other than C, the notes were no longer in tune. Sure, when we played the C major chord, it sounded nice, but what about when we want to play something other than the tonic? If we're on a fixed pitch instrument like a piano, we can't tune it mid-piece, and it's not practical to have lots of extra keys to play all of the in-between notes. The solution was 12-tone equal temperament. Since the 18th century, virtually all instruments have been tuned so that each semitone or half-step is an equal distance apart. The exact ratio between semitones is the twelfth root of two, approximately 1.05946. This meant that instruments could play in all keys, at the expense of having natural sounding intervals. In equal temperament, Intervals like the perfect fourth and perfect fifth are very close to their justly tuned counterparts, whereas major thirds are less in tune. It is a compromise that enabled modern music, as well as many jazz harmonies which would not be possible using just intonation. Whilst 12-tone equal temperament didn't become commonplace until the 18th century, it was calculated as early as 1584 by Chinese mathematician Zhu Zayu, who tuned bamboo pipes to his new tuning system. 12-tone equal temperament, as the name implies, is made up of 12 notes and is the dominant tuning system in Western music today, but it is not the only equal temperament. Traditional Chinese music has historically used seven-tone equal temperament, and the gamelan, a traditional Indonesian instrument, has been observed using a variety of tuning systems at different points in time. There's really nothing stopping you from creating your own temperament, aside from the practicalities of composing and performing. Joe Maniri performed using 72-tone equal temperament, and Julian Carrillo was an outspoken advocate of 96-tone equal temperament, Here's a quick summary of a few equal temperaments aside from 12-tone. Equal temperament is out of tune compared to just intonation when playing in one key. It was sometimes better for an instrument to be very in tune for that one key and out of tune in another key than be slightly out of tune in both. Pachelbel's Canon is a great example of this. Here it is in just intonation.
and here it is in equal temperament. The justly tuned one just sounds better. But what if a composer wants to modulate, or play non-diatonic chords, or even play in a different key? Building instruments, or tuning them every time you want to play a new piece, is incredibly laborious. Jazz music would not be possible without equal temperament. I'm not saying that equal temperament is perfect, or that it's better in every scenario, but when we consider the creative limitations that just intonation brings, equal temperament is a compromise which allows full compositional freedom, at the expense of perfection. Of course, there's always a few who will recoil when hearing an equally tempered major third. This is not in tune. It's not in tune at all. So the correct one is like... It's like that out of tune. But I'll leave you with this to describe equal temperament. Jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Only 2.6% of you are subscribed to my channel, so if you liked this video, please consider subscribing to help me reach 50,000. Thank you to Liam Glover, Ethan, Amir Petrovich, Paolo Fiorentino, and Rebecca Green for supporting the channel.